This is Ecotricity's Ecotech Roundup show from Aotearoa's only carbon zero certified renewable electricity company. We only source from wind, hydro and solar and we are the leading supplier of electricity to EVs in Aotearoa. Switch today at ecotricity.co.nz. Welcome back to another roundup in the world of clean cars and green energy. As always, thanks for joining me. We start today's show with official confirmation from Stellantis' truck division Ram in the US that the Ram Revolution 1500 shown at CES 2023 is on its way to production. At least it is in North America. Confirmed midweek, Stellantis says it will bring the Ram Revolution 1500 to market as the 2025 Ram 1500 REV. While Ram hasn't confirmed the final specification yet, the press release confirming its transition towards production states that, quote, We are confident the Ram 1500 REV will push past the competition, offering what will be the leading combination of attributes customers care about the most, range, payload, tone and charge time, end quote. This, we can quite confidently infer, means that the Ram 1500 will keep its triple row seating and plus-sized design. Ram says we'll receive more information this coming Sunday, Sunday, February 12th, so we will keep you posted. Last week, a court in Northern California found Elon Musk not guilty in a court case brought against him by investors angry about his going public at 420 funding secured tweet of 2018. Musk, having already settled with the US Securities and Exchange Commission over allegedly tweeting material information about Tesla on his personal Twitter account, a process that included him stepping down as chair of the board and paying a fine, was also sued by multiple Tesla investors. They claimed that Musk defrauded them of millions of dollars because the going public at 420 tweet claimed that he had funding secured for that move. While jury selection for the trial took some time and Musk himself had argued to have the case moved to Texas, he was ultimately found not guilty. As cars become more and more expensive and electric vehicles present a new future revenue stream for automakers, namely the resale value of their battery packs, more and more companies are encouraging customers to lease rather than to buy. This week, Hyundai went one step further, launching a new subscription service that it says offers a more flexible experience to leasing for its customers. While the firm once offered subscription plans for its Ionic Electric to Californians, this is the first time it's rolled out a more comprehensive service in the US. The new plan, called Evolve Plus, includes insurance and maintenance, but it's not exactly cheap. The Kona Electric is available for just shy of $700 a month, and the Ionic 5 is available for just under $900, each with 1,000 miles of allowed mileage per month. That's expensive. We've been watching over the last few years as the electrical grid around the world has become cleaner and cleaner, with more renewable sources of energy added to the mix. This week, new data was released by the US Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, or FERC for short, showing that last year an astonishing 75% of all of the new electrical grid generating capacity brought online came from renewable sources of power. Non-domestic solar projects added 9.9 gigawatts while wind farms added another 8.5 gigawatts. Geothermal added 90 megawatts, biomass added 31 megawatts, and hydropower 24 megawatts. Meanwhile, nuclear added 17 megawatts, and on the fossil fuel side, natural gas additions totaled 6.4 gigawatts, oil added 18 megawatts. It shows that the US grid is just getting cleaner and cleaner, and so are our EVs. Sono Motors had a rough end to last year with some concern over its long-term financial viability as the company crept towards series production of its Sono Sion solar electric car. This week, however, the company shared what it says is a video of its first low-speed crash test carried out as part of the legal test required of it under European law before it can go on sale. The short video clip shows a 50 km per hour, 31 mile per hour frontal crash in which, as per Sono Motors, the 
integrated photovoltaic solar panels on the hood of the car behaved, quote, as predicted, end quote. No physical exterior splintering of the solar panels are evident, which is a major milestone in proving that its integrated solar panel design does not pose any additional risks to road users or safety personnel in the event of an accident. As usual, we expect more crash test data to be made available in the future. Last week, we covered Ford's disappointing 2022 financials, which, despite strong EV sales towards the end of the year, saw it turn a loss year on year. Despite turning that loss, however, Ford's fourth quarter EV sales were strong, and now, data released this week, suggests that's continued into the first month of this year. In total, in January, Ford doubled its EV sales year over year compared to January 2022, with a total of 5,247 EVs sold. The majority of Ford EVs sold in January this year remained Mustang Mark E's, with 2,626 sold, an increase of 11% on the previous year. Ford's E-Transit sold 357, up 159%, while Ford's F-150 Lightning, which wasn't on sale last January, enjoyed sales of 2,264. This year could be very interesting for Ford. While legacy automakers have long opted to produce and sell plug-in hybrids as alternative to fully battery electric vehicles, there have been some legitimate concerns of late over how clean plug-in hybrid electric vehicles really are. In the past few years, we've seen several academic papers casting doubt on PHEV emissions, and this week a new study came out from the University of Technology in Graz, Austria. Commissioned by Transport and Environment, it focuses on emissions produced by cars when they were placed in hold mode, a feature available in some European market plug-in hybrids to allow owners to choose when to allow EV-only mode. The data suggests that in city tests, vehicles in hold mode emitted five to seven times their advertised carbon dioxide emissions, with the BMW 3 Series plug-in hybrid performing the worst of all of the cars tested. It's fair to say that 2022 was a good year for electric vehicles, with electric vehicle sales around the world ticking upwards while internal combustion engine vehicle sales fell. It was also a year of record investment into electric vehicle battery packs, with NPR reporting that a record $128 billion worth of investment was announced last year, specifically for EV battery development and production. $73 billion alone went into planned new battery production facilities, with Ford, General Motors and Volkswagen all naming battery production locations, as well as several more from startups. Not only do these new facilities improve battery pack availability for automakers, allowing more EVs to be made this year than at any point in history before, but it's also added more than 150,000 jobs across the US to the economy. I may have just covered massive investment last year in EV battery production facilities and research, but I'm about to head to another good news story for EV batteries. Recycling. That's because Redwood Materials, as founded by former Tesla CTO JP Straubel, has just been awarded two billion US dollars in funding from the federal government under the long-standing Advanced Technology Vehicle Manufacturing Loan Program. The loan, which is conditional in nature, will be used to help Redwood Materials continue construction and expansion of its battery recycling facility in McCarran, Nevada. In addition to safely recycling EV battery packs, the facility will also produce approximately 36 gigatons of ultra-thin battery-grade copper foil for use in new lithium-ion batteries using both new and recycled sources of materials. The facility will ultimately employ around 1,600 workers. Volkswagen has officially recalled all ID4 electric cars after reports began to roll in regarding potential loss of power in affected vehicles. According to the data supplied to the US National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, there have been two separate but related issues that could lead to a temporary loss of power leading to the recall. The two components, a high voltage battery management control module and a pulse inverter, could either reset or deactivate completely while driving, leaving affected cars at risk of being involved 
involved in an accident. Volkswagen says it's determined that the self-diagnostic software in the first and a software failure in the second are the root cause of the errors, and thus new software has been developed to fix the issue. Customers will be contacted by their local Volkswagen dealer by the end of March to arrange for a reprogramming. Before we get to the last two stories, a quick question. Are you in the market for a new electric car? If you are and you live in Aotearoa, you should totally check out our very own buyer's guide at ecotricity.co.nz. It is packed with all the information that you need to pick a car that's right for you and includes plenty of details about incentives you can get, charging providers you can use, and of course, how to get charging at home. Follow the link below and make sure that you start your journey to a cleaner, greener future today. There have been some truly amazing breakthroughs in the last decade when it comes to battery packs as found in both consumer electronics and in electric vehicles. But one of the biggest criticisms of batteries, especially those found in things like electric bicycles, is that they're not designed to be user serviceable. But a French company called Gouache is changing that, launching a new electric bicycle battery pack design that it says can easily be repaired throughout its life. Given that quite a lot of an electric bicycle's battery pack's cost is taken up by the casing and the power electronics needed to keep those battery cells safe and properly functioning, this is an incredible idea and I cannot wait to see electric bicycle companies snap up this battery design for use in the future. Come to think of it, I'd love all future micromobility battery packs to follow this engineering principle. And finally, it is that time of year when the entire US seems to focus on the game that I don't officially acknowledge as football. Because you neither play it with a ball, nor with your feet. But regardless of your opinion of Super Bowl Sunday, I think it's fair to note that the adverts that play during the halftime are legendary, and this year there's plenty of EV ads to be had. GM is right now at the head of the pack with a whole slew of short videos released on its YouTube channel it's made in collaboration with Netflix and Will Ferrell. Advertising the various electric vehicles GM is building and Netflix's commitment to feature more EVs in its various programs, these ads take the silliness to the max, featuring shiny new GM vehicles in shows where they'd not be anachronistically appropriate like Stranger Things, The Army of the Dead and Squid Game. Even though you're not in the US, if you like silly ads, you should totally check them out. And on that note, we are done for the day. Before I go though, do make sure you've hit this notification bell so you don't miss out on the latest in EV news and videos from this channel. And if you haven't yet, I don't know why you may not have done, but if you haven't, why not switch to Aotearoa's only Carbon Zero certified renewable electricity company. It is easy to make the switch and you'll be helping the nation wean itself off dirty energy and onto clean green power that will keep the land beautiful for generations to come. I will be back next week with another roundup show. Gav will be back in the meantime, the lovely Gavin Kiwi EV Shoebridge. If you haven't seen him swapping batteries in a big reg, it's high time you did, because it's pretty cool. And I'll be back here next weekend for our usual roundup show. Enjoy the rest of your day. I'm Nikki Gordon-Bloomfield. Kakite! See you next time.